It appears that the Cubans are up to their old tricks. As most of you know, Washington filibusters outfielder Justin Moore was abducted from his own clubhouse last week in what appeared to be a well-planned commando operation. Moore was conducting an off-season workout with two teammates when the incident occurred. He's not been heard from since, but this event recalls all too chillingly a kidnapping perpetrated seven years ago by Cuban operatives. We have with us Justin's wife, April Moore, who in addition to being a baseball wife, is also well known for her volunteer work in and around Washington, D.C. Mrs. Moore, I realize this must be a very difficult time for you. I just don't understand it. Why us? We have no connection to Cuba. It's not like the kidnapping all those years ago when Manny Chavez was taken. He was a member of the filibusters, like Justin, but he was Cuban-American. We know his ex-wife had moved to Cuba and was out to get him. Yes, for those of you who don't remember, Guadalupe Ramirez, also Cuban-American, divorced Manny and moved back to her native land eventually to become first lady of the nation. She and Manny got into a long-distance child custody dispute, and she apparently plotted his kidnapping. She had him transported to the presidential palace in Havana for the purpose of working out a deal more to her liking. I get all that, but it's ancient history, and it was between them. We never did anything to offend her. No, of course you didn't. But you may not be aware that her husband, President Ramirez, once tried out for the filibusters and didn't make it. Later, he tried to get an ownership stake in the team and failed again. That could be a part of the reason, I guess. Or maybe it's all about Guadalupe once again. Maybe she just has a thing for ball players. I must point out, we won't know anything for sure until the Cubans make a ransom demand. And in the meantime, I've got two little girls at home. They're just nine and six years old, and they're crying about their daddy every day. The U.S. government, or the military, must do something about this, and soon. Two months later, the United States military does act. Having picked up social media reports from Cuba that Justin had escaped from the presidential palace, the Navy stations a warship off the northwestern coast and puts out an alert about the ship's location, hoping that Justin will hear it. What an amazing turn of events. All of America is rejoicing at the miraculous rescue of Justin Moore, who's safe aboard a U.S. warship. His wife, April, is on her way to join him in Jacksonville, Florida, where the ship will dock. I can only imagine what a joyful reunion that will be. If only we could eavesdrop on it. Darling, this is the moment I've waited and longed for. I'm just so grateful that you're okay. Nothing else matters. All I want now is to get back to our normal life. I want that too, April. More than anything but it might not be so easy. I have something to confess to you. I hardly know how to say it. Justin, whatever it is, I promise not to be shocked. At least I'll try not to be. I've been in touch with Homeland Security officials this whole time. They always thought Guadalupe Ramirez was up to her old tricks. Then you realize there were certain things she forced me to do? That she threatened to keep me imprisoned forever if I didn't satisfy her? Can you forgive me? There's nothing to forgive, Justin. I know you've been faithful to me for years, and I don't want to hear the details about this. As far as I'm concerned, it's over. The sooner we both forget about it, the better. Once we're home with Andrea and Melissa, everything will be fine. But would everything be fine? Justin and April resumed their normal lives with their daughters in school and Justin getting ready to leave for spring training in mid-February. One night, they are relaxing before the TV, the kids already in bed, when they hear a startling news report out of Cuba. As reported earlier, we've learned that Guadalupe Ramirez, the First Lady of Cuba, has been ejected from the presidential palace and that her husband, the president, is seeking a divorce. 
The reason, according to sources, is that she's pregnant and she's admitted that the father is someone other than the president. We can only speculate on what that might mean. Oh, God, no. It can't be. The nightmare will never be over. That bitch still has a hook in me. Darling, I had a feeling this might happen, although I hoped and prayed it wouldn't. Of course she wanted to have your baby. Who wouldn't? Don't call it my baby. As far as I'm concerned, it's devil spawn. I'll never acknowledge it as mine. Enough of that, Justin. It's a baby, and there is no such thing as devil spawn. It's adults who mess up children. I've dealt enough with troubled kids in my volunteer work to know that. After leaving the presidential palace, Ms. Ramirez managed to speak with us through a video hookup. Here's part of that interview. I won't watch this. We have to, Justin. We must find out what's going on. There's no hiding from this. I am no longer welcome in the presidential palace. I'm being forced to leave behind the children I already have, but they belong to the regime, not me. So they must remain in the palace while I move on. That is my destiny. What does that mean exactly? What will you do? I will take to the streets to become an activist. I will denounce both the fascist U.S. and communist Cuban governments. If you want to know a state secret, actually, two of them, leaders of both nations plotted the abduction of Justin Moore for their own nefarious reasons. The facts will all be revealed one day, but the coming baby is my doing. I committed an unspeakable sin, but please understand, it was out of desperation. And after the baby is born, what will you do then? I can't keep this baby. I can't raise a child in the streets. I just hope that somewhere there is a kind, compassionate couple who will step forward to adopt the child, who will love it in spite of its origins. Will you please turn that off? I don't want to think about that child or hear about it. Not ever. Justin, we can't turn away. What do you mean, we can't turn away? I mean, I think we're that kind, compassionate couple that Guadalupe was talking about. I think we should adopt her baby. Are you crazy? I have PTSD issues because of what that woman put me through. How could I accept her baby as mine? I don't even want to contemplate looking at it. I can't explain this feeling. But it was like Guadalupe was talking directly to me, just now. Like we have a connection. Justin, this could be the son you always wanted. The son I always wanted? When did I ever say or imply that I needed to have a son? I love Andrea and Melissa with all my heart. And we have no way of knowing if Guadalupe's baby is a boy. Of course, we would love it either way. But I have an overwhelming feeling about it, and I've always felt a strong connection to adopted kids. Justin, I know you love our girls, but you can't deny you'd like to have a son that you could raise in your own image. Maybe be a ball player like you. I won't deny it, exactly, but your plan is just crazy. The plan might be crazy, but after much discussion, the Moors decide to pursue it. Through the machinations of both American and Cuban authorities, a video conference is set up between April Moore and Guadalupe Ramirez when she is about seven months pregnant. Well, April, it's nice to meet you, even if it's at such a distance. As you may know, I'm living hand-to-mouth on the streets of Havana, crashing with friends when I can and periodically getting clapped into jail as an anti-government agitator. But I am also an ex-first lady, and I suppose that keeps me from being hung as a traitor. I think it's really brave, what you're doing as an activist. I might say the same about you, wanting to take on this child. I know Justin will never speak to me again if he can help it, and I can't say I blame him. What I did to him was brutal and unforgivable. I did it to both of you, and yet I believe you're capable of forgiving me, even if Justin isn't. We both seem to believe that something good can come of it. It struck me the moment I heard about him. Interesting that you seem to know it was a boy, even before I did. Yes, he'll be a boy who'll grow up as an American kid, playing baseball like his dad, 
and then he'll go on to even greater things. Something tells me he's destined to be a political leader capable of bringing our two countries together. That's why we want to arrange for him to be born on U.S. soil, so that if our wildest dreams come true, he could become president of this country one day. <laughs> but no pressure, right? <laughs> well, anything is possible. I saw a video of one of your street speeches when you said that fascism and communism are different sides of the same coin. That's so true. We must get rid of both systems. And if we can't, the next generation must. Twelve years have passed since the tumultuous events surrounding Justin Moore's kidnapping. Justin, retired from playing baseball, is now a television sports commentator. His wife, April, is the president of a nonprofit where she has worked for many years. The Moore daughters, Andrea and Melissa, are drama majors in college. Their younger brother, Trevor, is the president of his middle school class and a little league star. I'm here on the docks at Jacksonville where the entire Moore family is about to embark on a trip to Cuba on the very ship that assisted in the rescue of Justin Moore all those years ago. So tell me, Justin, what's taking you back there? It's an important part of our family history. We decided, as a family, that it's time to face it head on. Of course, we couldn't think of venturing there if the leadership of the country hadn't changed. An interesting point, especially now that Guadalupe Ramirez is the one in charge. After she spent many years as an activist, the people finally overthrew her ex-husband and elected her president. She tells us it's a new Cuba, a democracy, sort of, and that she's a different person, too. I guess we'll find out for ourselves. The Moors plan to spend two weeks in the new Cuba. During their first audience with Guadalupe, she instructs her chief of staff on the activities that each member of the family will be engaged in. Justin will be broadcasting a baseball game between the U.S. and Cuban national teams. April will be visiting some local charities and giving talks on how nonprofits work in her country. And the girls, I hear, are aspiring filmmakers. They'll be making a documentary about the new Cuba. Very exciting stuff. Since we're shooting the film on location, Madam President, I hope you'll consent to an on-camera interview with us. Yeah, we'll be asking you the toughest questions we can think of. Understood. And what about the young man? I don't know. I think I just want to hang out with kids my age. That'll be fine, Trevor, and I hope you'll have some great stories to take back to your schoolmates in the United States. I hear that you're the president of your class. Yeah, that's right. It's really just because I'm popular. I get along with other kids great. That's why I want to talk to kids here. You know, to make sure they're okay. See, I know something real bad happened to my dad here years ago. And that's why he didn't want to come back at first. I can understand that. The kids here have problems and issues, just like you and your friends do. But they do the best they can, preparing to make this a better world someday. Yeah, but see, I think both our countries have done a lot of bad things. Not just Cuba. That's what my mom says, anyway. So we both need to get better. That's the only way we can all live in peace. You're very young, Trevor. But you're wise beyond your years. I wonder what made you that way. I have mom and dad to help me and explain things to me. Even though I don't always listen to them, and they say I don't understand everything yet. But they're really smart. I'm adopted, you know. They say that makes me special. It certainly does. You're lucky to have the parents you do. In a way, I chose them for you long ago. I don't expect you to understand that for a few years yet. But it means I love you too, even if it's from a distance. You're embarrassing him. I guess I am, but I can't help it. If you'll just give me a quick hug, Trevor, I promise to be satisfied with that. Now he's really squirming. Oh, I guess it's okay. <laughs>